the Microtech Amphibian. Is it as cool as people seem to think it is? We're going to try to answer that question here in this video. My name is Carter. Welcome to Edged Mindset. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Usual shill really helps me out. Uh, gets me excited and I like to interact with you guys, all that fun stuff. So do that down below if you can. Spare the few seconds to do that. That's much appreciated. The Amphibian, in my mind, is one of the coolest and best releases Microtech's done in terms of manual folders in a little while. Now that's a bold statement. I know there's a lot of manual folders that people love, uh, but it's been kind of dry lately. Uh, they've got the staples, the SOCOM Elite, things like that. But in terms of new folder offerings, there hasn't been a ton. And lo and behold, out of the fog comes the stitch manual. And then after that, or maybe before that, the MSI. Those were both great and pretty awesome. People have really liked the concept of a manual stitch folder. Um, I myself, not so much. I don't love the stitch. Uh, just no logical reason. It's not a bad knife, anything like that. Something to do with the shape, although it is bold and aggressive, and I do like that. Something about the stitch just doesn't jibe with me. I don't absolutely love it. Um, I've got one Ramlock stitch right now, and that'll probably be it. Uh, no autos, anything like that. No plan to get a custom, nothing like that. Uh, but then, like a knight in shining, shining armor coming through the parted armies in glorious, shiny armor. I already said shiny. In glorious, gilded armor is the amphibian, which was the answer to what I wanted. And before I get into any specs, before I talk at length about weights and use and blah, 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 I just want to say why I like it. What about the amphibian really speaks to me? Uh, first and foremost, and none of these are super amazing reasons. They're somewhat arbitrary, but they're just things that really drew me into the amphibian. The first is the recurve blade. Haven't seen recurves in production and popular in a long time. And I think I mentioned this on one of these unboxings. Uh, I like to see recurves come back into style. I think they've been ignored for far too long. They're beautiful. They're very functional. You've got this nice curve up here to capture material and cut through it. But then you've got the belly up at the front. It's a very utilitarian blade shape. It's classic, and it's been used for a long, long time, and they've kind of fallen out of style with popular EDC and carry knives over the last 10 years or so, or maybe a little less than that. Not that long, but uh, five to something years. They've kind of fallen out of style, so it's cool to see them come back. Um, really, really like that, and it's exciting to see it in this Ramlock. Loved it. Loved it. That was the first thing. Second was these thumb studs. So... Uh, not only having a thumb stud, because it seems like everybody's doing flippers or spidey holes and front flippers, which are great, uh, but I like a good thumb stud. I really like the way they did these. That's one thing with Microtech. Uh, they, they design everything. They take something like the thumb stud, which is pretty boilerplate. Most companies, like Cold Steel, they just throw on their standard issue thumb stud, and that's it, right? It's... It's purely a utility thing. They don't spend any time designing it. Uh, Microtech tends to design everything. And you can see here with this nice stepped milled pattern on these. Looks cool. Works even better. Symmetrical on both sides. So that's honestly the primary thing. Thirdly is just the size. I like big knives. This is a big knife. Let's do some measurements real quick. I think it's like, what, four inch blade. Nice, robust, big four inch blade. Yep. Four inches overall length, nine and a quarter. Well, almost nine and a half. Uh, so overall length, blade length, nice and big. And then weights for such a large knife. The weight is quite under control. I've been meaning to do a comparison between the carbon fiber and the G10. So 5.5 on the carbon fiber, actually a little bit higher than I was expecting. And then six on the G10. So half an ounce lighter on the carbon fiber. You can definitely feel it. I thought it would actually be more substantial than that. But uh, but yeah, beautiful knife. Very usable. In the hand, it feels super lightweight. And I think it's primarily just due to how large it is. You expect it to be much heavier. It's also balanced really, really well. Just right there on that first finger choil 
right below that pivot. This one I think is probably similar, maybe a little more weighted towards the back because of the lack of the carbon fiber. Features the ram lock system here, which puts this whole carriage back behind on the tang there, locks it up. Um, I've heard of people having reports of these locks failing, sometimes as easy as just light tapping. I have tested all of my ram locks and I've had no issues. Uh, locks have not failed. Now, I'm not doing old school spine wax like we used to do back in the 2010s. Uh, I'm not doing anything that hard, just kind of a making sure that it's keeping the blade still. Because despite me participating in the lock wars of those times where everybody was trying to come up with the strongest lock and that was like the big key thing, nowadays I'm a little bit more reasonable with my lock strength, right? My goal with the lock is just to keep it in the open position, not to protect it against extreme force on the spine or stabbing force. A knife like this should be used properly in this direction for cutting or in a defensive situation for slashing. And as long as this lock keeps this blade up reasonably well, that's all that's needed. Um, you should never rely on any folding knife to take huge amounts of force on the opposite side. Even if, even if a particular model is capable of that, you never know if your particular knife is capable, capable of that and your particular knife in its current condition is capable of that. You could take a knife design. I'm going off on a tangent here, guys. You could take a knife design that is taken tons of force, you know, tons of tested force, tons of spine whacking, and maybe even you get that exact knife. You buy that knife and you test it out and it works. But then in a time of crisis, you pull it out and maybe a piece of lint gets back there, maybe some oil, some gunk, maybe the spring's worn out, whatever the case may be. And in that particular instance, it doesn't have that ability. You don't want to rely on that. You don't want to use your knife as though it's going to take that kind of force and use. Anyways, I'll get off my soapbox. Uh, my locks have been great. Super easy to use. Once again, styling. They're doing the X pattern on there. Not only does it look pretty cool, some may say it's a little obnoxious, but I think it looks cool. Very functional, stepped up, stepped down, easy to grab, easy to manipulate. Kind of half open design. You've got some pockets here for things to flow through, as well as this backspacer, titanium backspacer there. Pretty big slots for water, dust, whatever to come through the back end. Lanyard hole right there, reversible pocket clip left and right. Some people don't like this pocket clip. It's 3D milled. No, not 3D milled. Uh, yeah, 3D milled pocket clip. Some people like the deep carry pocket clip that's on the, uh, the stitch. Personally, I prefer this just because I think it looks better. And for me, having an extra quarter inch poking out of my pocket, I don't care. No big deal. In fact, I almost like it because if people recognize this knife, they may come up and talk to me and we can strike a conversation I don't have any issues where I live of that causing any sort of problem of people knowing I've got a knife on me. Everybody does. Not a big deal. People open carry, concealed carry, all kinds of things. So not an issue here, uh, but I just like the look of this and it's more robust. It's less likely to bend out of place because there's more material than the bent deep carry pocket clips that you see on the stitch. Action is nice and smooth. Only downside to... Any sort of bar lock like this is flickability is reduced. You can do it, some better than others, but because it doesn't have that hard stop detent that builds up the pressure that you get past and then it flings open, you've got more of a, a band. So you've got to make it all the way past all of this in order to flick it open. It's never going to have that same flickability that a standard detent would. Uh, so this detent is closed. And then once you pull out the blade a little bit, it's now past the detent completely and it's free moving. Not the best example. This thing's kind of a little tighter than it should be. Uh, whereas this doesn't have that hard stop, right? But it's just the nature of how this works. The detent has more of a, a band as it makes it around this and pushes the, pushes the lockdown. But conversely, you can do things like that where you reduce all of the pressure and it just freely floats. And that's due to the uh, ceramic ball detent system that's going on here, um, which Microtech 
is really good at implementing in their knives. Uh, in their manual folders, I'm gonna do a separate video on this, but one of the interesting things about Microtech, I don't know why I'm showing off the standard version, not the carbon fiber version that looks much cooler. One of the weird things about Microtech is they seem to keep their features in their manual folders modern. They do all the standard stuff, lock bar inserts, ceramic ball detent, ceramic ball bearing, titanium, all these things. But their automatics haven't really changed in a long, long time. They don't really update the mechanisms in their automatics and they don't really add additional features similar to this Guardian Tactical, how it has the steel insert, the ball bearings. Microtech doesn't really do that. It's kind of interesting. They keep their OTFs and their side opening automatics pretty legacy and their manual folders up to date with the latest stuff. Kind of interesting, just a side note. But overall, one of my favorites, mainly because I think it just looks cool. And it's been so long since I've seen this recurve right here. Uh, really, really cool. Oh, let's talk about cost. So in the Microtech world, uh, very affordable. The Amphibian with G10, I think MSRP is for 300. And then if you wanna go DLC, which DLC is pretty expensive, DLC carbon fiber, I think these are like 460 MSRP. Now, right now, because it's such a hot knife, you know, on the secondary market, you're not really seeing the savings come through. Uh, these kind of go for upwards of $400, actually more than retail because they're so sought after and they sell out. And these go for like five to 600. Uh, but as time goes on, they're gonna make more and more. That's gonna change. Same thing happened with the stitch. Now you can get the stitch below retail on the secondary market. Same thing's gonna happen here. So value-wise, it's pretty dang good for a USA-made knife. And uh, in this economy, it's pretty dang good, uh, especially for such a cool, cool knife. M390 MK on the blade steel. I don't know if I mentioned that. Standard stuff. Almost not worth mentioning nowadays because like Microtech and M390 are synonymous. It's about all they use right now. So... Uh, very cool knife. Highly recommend. Pick one up if you can. Microtech Amphibian. Let me know down below. What do you think of this knife? Is it cool? Are you going to pass? Are you going to pick one up? What's the deal? Let me know. Talk to you guys later.